we were chatting about last time because we got to kind of got to know each other. There was a few a uh, few of us joined uh, last month um, and we had a, a really nice chat uh, to Dean who was very very helpful uh, in sharing some of his um, of his wisdom on writing quantum and we thought it would be a great idea to have an entire episode dedicated to quantum uh, where we can chat uh, to Dean a little bit more about the writing of it um, and then his process and also it's such a fantastic thing to you know be able to uh, delve into more of the production style um, as well. Uh, now I know Malcolm has uh, been uh, messaging me all throughout the week with his questions uh, and I know he has quite a few um, and I know we were chatting, me and Malcolm uh, were chatting just a little bit ago and I just wondered if I could kick off uh, this evening or daytime evening for me, uh, if I could kick off this uh, evening, this session uh, by opening up to Dean and just a little bit talking about right at the start because uh, the level of detail, the technical detail with everything was just quite astounding. And as you know, as a, a wannabe writer myself sort of took me, um, made me quite anxious <laughs> that, uh, that I need some serious catch up game uh, going on. So I wanted to know about your process um, of, of sort of uh, coming into this with the planning and, and the research and how long that actually took you. And then also, um, did you research as you went along or had everything all ready before you started the piece? Is that, Margaret, that was your question, wasn't it? That was one of the things I was talking to you about earlier. Yes, yeah, so I was curious about the, the detail in it is absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it really makes the book as well. Um, so yeah, Dean, did, did you, uh, well, first of all, you must have done an, a massive amount of research, either that or you are a spy um that's what i can say you 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 perhaps you are a spy for the cia <laughs> <laughs> okay uh first of all uh hi everybody uh i'm i i've uh, i am seeing and now i'm sorry i am on my phone because i'm outside but uh, i have seen that there is uh, miss uh, miriam cruzado with us cynthia yes yes hi <laughs> <laughs> I am here. Cynthia. I'm just swapping for a little bit, but I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Cynthia is one of the characters in the book, and uh, she played uh, very well, actually, in the in the audiobook, uh, the part of this uh, journalist, uh, um, Latino journalist, uh, that uh, she uh, actually she got the 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 she tries to get you know the the things right, even if uh, in some way uh, uh, after. Uh, getting the thing right, uh, there is the CIA that is coming in, you know, and uh, basically uh, they shut everything down and everything else. Um, hi, Malcolm. It's, it's always a pleasure to to be to see you, and uh, thank you for the the question. Um, first of all, uh, it really depends on uh, on uh, your uh, uh, writing flow. If you do the research during. Uh, uh, the, the 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 writing or before for me is a lot easier to do it before and uh, it takes uh, a lot of time uh, um, usually it for to in order to get all the information the, the right information uh, if i have an idea uh, is uh, it takes uh, anything in between uh, four to four months to one year in uh, in the case of of uh, of uh, quantum in particular case of quantum uh, it took me one year because i have a background that is uh, classical st studies so uh, my my background was not on physics was not on mathematics and was not at all on uh, quantum mechanics which is a very weird uh, you know science uh, is very interesting and is very is the the, the science of uh, of tomorrow because in fact uh, there are a lot of things that are a lot of applications to the quantum mechanics that are already um, that we are using. I'm talking about uh, laser laser for example. I'm talking about uh, uh, some of the the chips that are coming out uh, now for for uh, the new phones or new computers. So. But it's a, it's a really weird science. So I had to read, basically, in order uh, to, to write something that was plausible on a scientific side, 
I had to read a, a lot of people that uh, in some way are not, uh, they wrote fantastic book, but they are not books uh, for everyone. What I'm saying is that they are books, uh, non-fiction books uh, that obviously they are uh, aimed to, to the scientific world. I'm talking of, about uh, Brian Greene, it's a, a brilliant uh, physic. I'm talking about uh, Mikio Kaku. I'm talking about uh, um, three or four other, you know, authors uh, and uh, th that are formed as uh, astrophysics or physics, or, you know, theoretical physics. So, and uh, to digest uh, this amount of information was the first, uh, um, the first part of the, uh, the first difficult part of the whole process. The other part was to translate those concepts in a, in a language that was uh, um, understandable for the majority of people that, uh, that, that, that they, 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 they are, I, I think, uh, like me, you know, if, if, I, if I write a, a formula in, for quantum mechanics, uh, I, I believe that uh, probably there is the 1% of people in the world that get, is, is able to read it, you know? So I had to translate all this concept in a way that was uh, understandable for the public, for the readers. And I think that this is the, the most important part and it's the most difficult part because you have to bring to your readers um, the feeling of uh, the field in which uh, in which you are uh, the, the feeling that, that you are exploring, but in a way that uh, uh, doesn't bore them. And this is the most difficult part because it's very easy, especially with scientific uh, in the scientific field, uh, getting boring. You know, it's, 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 if if I start to do a, if if I do a treaty on. A, uh, what is happening to the uh, to the microcosmos in uh, in for example it is applied to to uh, atoms or, or things like this in the jargon that usually the scientists they use in 10 minutes everybody gets bored so this was the first thing and uh, uh, the second thing is that uh, um, Research, in my opinion, is something that uh, in any case is useful for any writer in order to uh, get more knowledge on, uh, in the course of, of your writing career. You know? So if uh, the, the things that I study for quantum, they, uh, and because I, I wrote quantum uh, uh, after this research, they stay with me. I mean, the, the macro uh, concept, they, they are still here, you know, and uh, now I'm able to read uh, uh, this kind of book in a, in a easier way that was at the beginning. So basically this is the, 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 the bottom line, you know, of, uh, of uh, the research. Research um, is important because it gives you uh, not only information, but uh, the knowledge and uh, you can, in some way entering the mind of people that uh, uh, is doing uh, the, such a research. You know, you can understand uh, how they move and where, when, uh, where they wanna go. So this is important for, for, for you, your own life. I mean, in, in, beside the fact of being uh, uh, um, writing something or not. I find, I find that really fascinating, the idea of, of, of keeping things and, and put, like storing them from project to project or it's just through the, as you go through life. And just storing the thing um that actually um makes me want to ask kevin um through working um in audiobooks and 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 uh, approaching um di you know different roles and different subject materials and then just as uh, we were just asking dean now when the heavy uh, technical um material source material gets out there have you any you know is there a different way to approach uh, a certain text uh, and then also, does anything stay with you through project to project that makes approaching a difficult uh, a piece, you know, maybe something really technical? Uh, does that does that um, affect the way that you uh, come to a, a, a project? 
the main thing for me is just to make sure I'm pronouncing the words right. <laughs> you know, is it, it disembirkel rectifier or disembirkel rectifier? You know, it's, uh, so that's as uh, long as I can sound like I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> then, then uh, yeah, some things stay with me. Some, you know, I'll, I'll learn a few things. But if it's too hairy, that's when you were talking about the quantum physics, I remember reading uh, Michael Crichton timeline, and he talks a lot about the quantum physics and that. And then at the end, he says, Although a lot of the things in this uh, don't aren't quite, you know, wouldn't really happen that way. It's like I wouldn't know, but you know, as long as it sounds good and is a narrator, as long as I can make it sound good and believable, then that's that's my job, and then I can just go back to being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> How do you um, like, so? There's obviously there's lots of CIA and Mossad, and, and you know all those really gritty characters and real uh, interesting voices. There. How do you approach creating that? um uh, for, for the audio but is there any references that you take or is there any um oh you... yeah and and becky she likes to throw or i guess it was dean who threw the curve because you had a israeli mossad agent so i'm looking up online you know i'm thinking okay i think i know a little bit of that and i'm reading you know so i'm trying to get this accent and one of the things i read is that the in israeli they don't say H's, so they, they would go to the hospital, but they have a hard H, you know, like, you know, and so there's, I remember there's one part in the book, uh, where Dean wrote, where uh, there was a Mossad agent who was supposed to be pretending to be somebody from the southern U.S., so you'll start with this accent, and then I would think, okay, in the U.S., we usually exaggerate, or you know, so he would exaggerate and talk like this, and could you tell me if there's anybody in room 219, and then when the the person at the desk answers he says well thank you for your help and so I, I thought he would probably overcompensate for not you know saying h's when he would do that israeli that guttural your know, help and so uh, those are the things that you have to keep in mind but yeah there's research on uh, on first of all the actual you know the way they would say things and then you get into the the mind of you know what would they be thinking and you know in trying to do is they're as the Israeli guy is trying to fake a Southern U.S. accent, so <laughs> yeah. those layered accents are uh, are particularly uh, interesting and fun to play with. Uh, I remember at that moment in the recording session when that um, that came up. But anyway, Kevin did a, a, a fantastic job. It was it was not not easy. It was absolutely not easy. I I know that I. Oh God! <laughs> in this, I uh, no, I it's not easy because it, it seems you know when when you hear the the, the audiobook, uh, you actually you are following the story, you know. And if the voices are like in in, uh, in quantum, you know, voices uh, they get they uh, give you in your mind uh, an idea of uh, the 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 character is uh, really drawn in your mind you know uh, uh, and this really linked to the to the voice so you can you can uh, in, in, in the case of kevin for example when he when he speaks uh, and uh, you can uh, imagine uh, what what is all about you know is this man uh, tall uh, short uh, is uh, well built even if there is a little description and i, I always did uh, little description on purpose in my book of the the character why i give you some guidelines and after it's up to your imagination and a great help is when when you have like we had we had a, a fantastic uh, uh, bunch of per performers really you know very good um, you know performance professional and uh, mm -hmm. everything has been really done i mean this this is Becky did a great work uh, with with the uh, directing, which is not easy, by the way. So, yeah, it's it's complex. The, the the whole thing is really complex. It's not something that, that you can you, you can do in you know like uh, uh, fifteen days. You know, it's not it's, it's not a, it's not going in this way. And I am sometimes I am uh, um, taken back by by the idea that uh, there are a lot of sites uh, a lot of uh, podcasts uh, that they say you know you can record your own audiobook and blah 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 it, i i don't think that is the, the the good way to do it you know i mean you have if you are a writer you have to write that that's it you don't have to to perform you you don't have to be an actor you you are, you are a writer you are the one that is writing actually what the other are supposed to say 
after is uh, and it's not uh, even up to me to choose the voices this is the reason why we put together and becky knows this we put together a focus group because uh, i am interested in uh, knowing who the public uh, has to decide who what is the best voice you know to for for this kind of role so it's not up to me at all it's something i have an idea you know that probably it, it doesn't appeal for the 90 percent of people you know because I, I am writing the book and probably 90 percent of the readers they say no this is not the the, the right voice for me you know mm -hmm. so it's uh, and uh, the 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 job that uh, you did guys kevin and all the others you know has been uh, astonishing i am i was really pleased really really pleased thank you you. Well, you brought up an interesting point, too, that I've, I've found that when you're doing the voices, if, if I'm just doing a voice, I'm just going to do this type of accent or this, this rough gear. If it's just a voice, it's not very good. And right, I have to picture somebody in my mind. And so a lot of times I may picture an actor or, uh, you know, so maybe Edward G. Robinson. See, yeah, that's right. You dirty <laughs> rat. Or, or what, you know, but, but I'll have that picture. And as long as I can picture that and I am that person, the voice works. Otherwise, it starts to slip and I get back into my good old Southern Texas, you know, accent. <laughs> when, you're, when you're developing, um, Kevin, the, the accent, especially the, uh, you know, specifically the, the, the hybrids between them, um, I can imagine that taking quite a lot of, concentration and, and sitting down and really working out as you said like uh the, the the sort of main traits of each accent and trying to blend them and things how many hours are you spending around in your daily life with that accent <laughs> instead of your own i'll tell you honestly i've been doing it since i was a kid and uh, not a, are, are you are you in england is that yes um yes okay well i get because i started out when i was a kid in the tv show the monkeys you may be too young to remember the monkeys but davy jones he had that manchester i remember them and so i would i would go around yeah and talking like this because i wanted to be davy jones daydream believer you know, and so drive my mother nuts and so and anybody i'd see on tv you know i would i would start you know imitating them and uh so that's i've just been doing it since i was a kid but i still have to work on if we get one different one of the first ones i did was a book it was a scottish character and i watched all these movies with a thought, thought well they were they were authentic scottish people and i did it and the very first review that came in from audible uk was titled worst scottish accent ever <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> you win some you lose some you know <laughs> yeah. i think to be honest even even as as uh, brits malcolm and jess can can uh, vouch for scots uh, it's scottish is so difficult isn't it to get uh, as an accent it's because they can't make up the minds of what they sound like either you know 15 minutes away from each other they all sound so different <laughs> well that in one of the groups i actually i put you know what had happened in that review and i had several people from scotland saying you know we've gotten the same comments on our narration and we are from scotland and then there was a big debate on how to pronounce edinburgh you know it's, yeah. <laughs> i said it even depends on what part of the town you're from you know is you're from north edinburgh or are you from south yeah. edinburgh you know so. <laughs> yeah and i think one of the one of the craziest things about it is it like once you get sort of past inverness and it's like the real like north highlands and stuff that is, it just becomes inaudible it's just yeah. mumbling so you know to, you can't narrate that you have to do you have to you know like dumb it down but then it's not it's not realistic so yeah. <laughs> you get into a lot of trouble uh, yeah. um, well, i'm glad we didn't have scottish in there then yeah. <laughs> i always end up sounding like that little leprechaun on the lucky charms commercials you know <laughs> irish scottish whatever you know <laughs> So you mentioned um, casting this, and I can imagine with you know so many voices and so many auditions coming through, and so many different characters, and and things. was it immediately obvious? Did you have did you set out in mind that oh you wanted um, uh, you know you have all these voices to fill? Um, if, if you have a, you know a narrator who can tackle quite a few, was that something that happened after casting that narrator? Uh, like did a narrator come on board and you think oh do you know what this person might be really great for a few voices, or was it sort of pre thought out of oh we need someone to bundle? Yeah, we were we were looking for specific accents uh, as well as you know great actors. So um, that was a challenge. And it was really great having the focus group because um, you know it gave us a lot of uh, you know support in the like determining which which roles any particular actor was going to play. What we found was that we started off thinking we were going to have about fourteen actors. And we ended up with 32. 
Because it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it makes for a, a, an even better end result. Uh, but, you know, additional challenges along the way, both in terms of the, um, the scheduling as well as uh, the, the mixing of the many different studios to make sure that we're all sounding like we're in the same place. Um, but, uh, but that, that casting, that cast did grow. Yeah, I think it was, I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, we were thinking 14 at first. And, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And after I, uh, I uh, we, uh, the, the, because uh, the, the, they're all, Pre-production phase is uh, is amazing, also you know, because you have uh, uh, usually you have the 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 psychopathic writer one side, and you have the the sane people on the other side, you know. So the psychopathic is always coming up with something like, uh, "What about uh, you know putting that?" And the sane people they say, "You know, it's because at the beginning, I I have to tell you something. I um I shop around." Uh, my background uh, um, has been for 18 years, I've been a, a TV producer. So I shop around to get the right studio to do this. And I have to say that, uh, uh, Becky, you remember that uh, we click almost immediately. Uh, me and you, when we had the first uh, Zoom call, we were like on the same page, you know? So I was like, okay, this is the right studio because they give me uh, the, the, the confidence that, that they, they're going to do a, a fantastic job. And I was not wrong on this. But I can understand from the other side, because to organize all this, the, the problem is that the, the writer said, okay, here, the, what is the, obviously they're going to ask you what is the budget. Uh, you go down with the budget. Uh, you, and after that, uh, the, the big work is uh, uh, their side. You know, because the, the only thing that I did, I put together a focus group. I, I have a, uh, my media guys that are, are, are working almost uh, uh, weekly, on weekly basis on, on focus group. So the, for them it was uh, pretty easy to, to put together 15 people of different uh, uh, nationalities, but uh, with, uh, with all able to understand and speak English. So basically we, we had a, a quite, uh, wide range of uh, possible um, listener, you know, to the audiobook. And this is the, the, the quality of focus group is, is also important. But from that, from that point on was all Becky problem, you know, and uh, <laughs> it was, uh, and we had, uh, we had a fantastic communication. We, we, we could communicate, uh, we were communicating almost on, on daily basis. And when you, when you enter in a project like this, uh, you have, in my opinion, you have to work in this way. There is no other way to do it. No other way. Because otherwise you come up with something, you know, that is so, so maybe, you know, is something that uh, is, is not, uh, is not what, what you want at the end, you know. And uh, the final result uh, beside myself uh, was, uh, I, I think that this uh, is getting uh, more and more appreciated by people that uh, are, is, uh, all the people that are buying the book right now. So, you know, I am, uh, I'm absolutely happy. And uh, uh, like we say in Italy, the, the, the winning team never change. So the, the, all the, the next, the future audiobook that will be pretty soon uh, will be done uh, through, through Pro Audio Voice for sure. Because we know them now, we, we move in a way that is compatible for both of us. You know? yeah. Being always the psychopathic this side. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I mean from um, an, an outside perspective on the project I think the thing that baffles me um, as well is just the logistics of handling so many different studios you know so many different talent um, all coming in and trying to get it to one I mean it's funny isn't it because uh, Game of Thrones was made famous because there, there was like four crews um, all around the world filming and that's nothing compared to this <laughs> if you think about how many different uh, pieces coming together uh, and Becky I was just wondering how you sort of like found that uh, I mean it's a uh, it's it's quite a you know the, the most audiobooks are, are sort of either single or dual um, and then obviously to go to a, a, a full cast how how like how does that differ in 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 
you know, preparation, stamina and result, how does that sort of, def- how does that differ when, you know, coming to that approach? Yeah, yeah. So there, are, uh, it seems like with full cast productions that there are two basic models. One is where you gather all of the cast in one place and record together. And that's, you know, kind of like, that's the very expensive version. And, you know, I, yeah, I mean, optimal in many ways, but um, not always, um, you're not always going to get the people that you want also when you are, when you have to bring them together into a single place. And we had a cast literally around the world. So our bigger challenge in, from the logistics point of view was making sure we could find a time when we could schedule somebody who was on the Pacific coast of the United States and, you know, like in Greece, you know, at, and be able to record sessions where we have, you know, people sprinkled around the world. Um, and I think one of the other, uh, one of the other challenges, especially for those for whom English is not their first language, is that some of the um, uh, some of the English just speaking the English words? Uh, I'm thinking about our uh, our, our uh, top Mossad leader, uh, where it would you know just for him to formulate those sounds in his mouth was sometimes really challenging, and you know we, we just spent the time in the in the sessions to help him you know get to where he could he could do that um uh and he wasn't the only one you know but the beauty is like everyone on the call is like we're with you you know (laughs) you can do this there's so much support uh you know for the for the team overall um and then um yeah, yeah so so that was that was a, a big piece uh, for us. Of, and, and then sometimes, you know, just making sure like when, uh, like finding the right voices, you know, making sure that the accents were, um, were accurate, um, you know, uh, was challenging in that pre-production in that casting process. Um, and we had a few, uh, at, the, at least that auditioned for those with the Italian accents. Well, we, you know, those weren't going to make it through until they were like truly authentic, right? (laughs) Um, Absolutely. So, uh, you know, there were just, there was a lot of reaching out beyond our usual network for finding that cast. Um, uh, And then one of the other things that I I found kind of interesting was, you know, when the the process that we're using when we're doing the full-on directed sessions is to use Zoom to connect us, not for the recording, uh, the actual recorded files, because we're, we're each using our own, you know, audio system. Yeah, yeah. But you know, Zoom has its own little glitches. So, uh, you know, that it d- just dealing with those, and also trying to really recognize when something that sounded maybe a little distorted was just a zoom issue versus it was actually distorted, you know, and not wanting to like interrupt the flow of a scene that's going really well because maybe zoom did a little funny thing. So a lot of interesting things, um, but such a great process. I just really enjoyed working with the cast. Um, Wonderful. And with Dean, of course, and, and his team, just so great. I think it's fantastic. Um, uh, Kevin, if I could just um, pass over to you with the same uh, topic, uh, talk, uh, staying with the uh, the topic of the casting process, and then also working uh, with you know within a full cast. So first of all, um, how is it uh, working with a full cast compared to you know a voice in the narration standalone? Um, and then second of all, with a, uh, during the casting process, I know a lot of uh, our viewers who will be watching this at a later date, I know a fair few of them um, as audiobooks start to, you know, really take off into the mainstream as a medium, uh, the job of an audiobook narrator becomes one uh, 
uh, that people start to take a real interest in pursuing. And I know that one of the main uh, one of the main things that people struggle with is the casting process and you're sort of going for those auditions and putting their best selves there. So my question is, have you any advice uh, to um, to audiobook narrations or uh, audiobook narrators during that casting process and how to put that best self there and how to really make it their own? You know, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, I actually have a, a video on YouTube. If you look up Kevin Clayton, it's audiobook narration tips for beginners. And I think last I checked, it had like 130,000 views or something crazy. And uh, and I and I tell people to you know contact me, but uh, as far as, I'm not sure how I got in touch with Becky. I mean, Becky contacted me, but I don't know how you found out about me. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's, you know, I've got, a, uh, it's not just me. I got a whole team. So yeah, uh, maybe post post office wall, you know, wanted, uh, I don't know, but, uh, be, but the, the main thing, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I guess I will say, as far as kind of what you're talking about, as far as working with cast, Becky makes it good because she does, you know, give you those little bits of guidance. And instead of saying, you idiot, that wasn't the way to do it. She'll say, <laughs> you know, think about, you know, as I was mentioning the actors who say, I picture this guy more like that guy in that movie. And that really, you know, clicks with me. But uh, as far as people looking into it, uh, you know, I got into it through uh, acx.com, which is Audible's, uh, you know, clearinghouse, I guess. And you can, you know, do royalty share books there. So they don't pay you anything. They're probably a lot of not very good books, but at least you can get that experience because the, the main thing they don't realize is there's a lot more to it than you think. And in fact, you know, Dean was mentioning how the writers write and the narrators narrate. I've actually gotten jobs from writers who were watching my video thinking they wanted to do their own book. And then after watching the video, they said, you know, maybe I'll just hire this guy to do it <laughs> because there's, you know, it's, you, there's the talking into the microphone part. But then there's also the, you've got to meet the audible specs, you have minus three dB, you know, peak and minus 18 to 25 average RMS. And I don't even know what that root, rude monkey scat or so. I don't even know what that stands for, but my stuff's in there. And uh, then there's also, I, I pay a lot for training uh, from, you know, there's, there's all that to make sure that I don't sound terrible. Like I used to, I mean, when I started out, you know, come from radio, you know, everything sounded like this. You know, he walked to the refrigerator, he opened the door, he picked out the mayonnaise, you know, and so, uh, cause on the radio, everything is so important and so big. And, uh, you know, I, I got some good training from uh, Pat Fraley and Scott Brick and they're like, you know, settle down, just, just tell the story. And so uh, that'd be the main, I guess, starting out, I'd say, get some training from, you know, look online, uh, find some, a coach that really clicks with you. And uh, then, you know, maybe do one of these books on ACX and see if it's really what you want to do. You know, you may find out that, you know, I really just hate sitting in a chair and reading for hours on end. You know, yeah. of course, my, you know, helps. As I said, I got my dog next to me, so that helps. But uh, <laughs> that'd be my advice. I think there's that, uh, there's the test, isn't there, that's um, on another, uh, you should, I think it's Sean Allen Pratt's test. Yes. Uh, where you sit in a, in a corner or in a closet or in a bathroom um, and just read for two hours a day for two weeks or something. Um, to, to uh, I don't know anyone who would ever want to do it after doing that. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, and and, and and Sean Allen, he he knows what he's talking about. To me, though, I would say just go and try to actually do a book. You know, one of those royalty shares. So at least when you're done, you've actually got something. To me, that'd be the equivalent of saying, well, to see if you want to play, well, in America, you know, football, our football, uh, you know, run up and down a field several times, just running into people and, you know, do that for four hours. And you know, it was not the same as actually being in the game. And so you know, that's why I would say, try to actually do a book. And then, cause you also then see all that technical part. And if, if that's something that you really have a, you know, a, an aptitude for, or if you go, no, I think I'd rather just listen. <laughs> Um, Malcolm, uh, you, I know you um, have been, you're one of the OGs of audiobook listening um, and have been listening to uh, audiobooks for decades in the, uh, in, in the recorders and the tapes. <laughs> and I just wondered uh, if you'd noticed, well, firstly, if you'd noticed the rise uh, in audiobooks popularity uh, and, and secondly, about how productions have changed as well compared to the narrations of, you know, 2000, how they've changed to uh the ones of today yeah yeah absolutely i mean obviously i started in the 1800s because that's what you just made me sound <laughs> yeah um, right. but no you are right actually that um i used to do a lot of driving um with with my job and going back to sort of mid 90s um i i quickly found that 
um, you could go to the library and get books for the deaf, I would say for the deaf, uh, for the blind, um, which basically they were on cassette recorder. Um, and obviously cars in them days had cassette recorders and not CDs. Um, and so basically I went, and there was only a very small section. Uh, so literally you might have a massive library and then there would be maybe two or three shelves of, of audio books. Um, so you've got very limits of, of what you could actually listen to. Uh, and even amongst those, some of them were just old radio plays. Um, and being literally on the, the road for, for quite a number of hours, I would take three or four, uh, probably a week or, or certainly a fortnight um, and listen to them. Then sort of moving forward into sort of when we got into the 2000s and, and, and moving along, the, the not only did the volume of, of books become available, but you were finding that more modern books, because obviously a lot of the books were just old books um, that would be had been re uh, read. Um, but now you are getting a bigger volume of them, but also more modern. And things also like um, autobiographies, which were never there before. It was always storybooks. Um, so they've really certainly increased in, in the number. But as you say on production, I think that definitely in the early days, you got literally somebody sat there and read a book. Now they, you know, once upon a time, you know, it was a grey muck day and, and people were milling around the marketplace and you got a book. Now you're getting a performance. Um, and, it, and I really noticed that from the sort of 90s when I started, and then I had a little bit of a break when I didn't do so much driving and did more traveling by plane. But then when I got back into sort of a bit more driving, I got back into the books and noticed that suddenly I was listening to performances. So even though it was single narration, you were getting, you know, um, this guy walked into the street, he turned to his friend and then he said, well, uh, you know, and it's sort of, you could differentiate between the characters, even though it was a single narration. But I know it sounds crazy now, and you probably start going, oh, that's natural. It is, but it wasn't, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, it was definitely somebody reading you a book, like your, your mum and dad or something, <laughs> when they used to put you to bed. It was almost the same as that. Um, so, yeah, things have really changed in performance. Um, I'm not going to say um, in the quality um, you know, I know you got you just touched on it yourself, Kevin, with the quality that um, Audible and, and ACX and all those people uh, use. But I couldn't say I noticed a great difference, maybe because I was listening it up to on cassette um, and, they, and even on CD. You know, everybody says CD was perfect, but no, CD still jump. <laughs> if they handle badly. And and so, uh, yeah, I can't say the 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 quality was better, but definitely the performance has got better. Yeah. I think it's things... Well, that was a long way, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think obviously as, as things sort of grow in, in, in you know, in the, in the marketplace and then uh, as I think we've, obviously we've all got better resources to listen to audiobooks now, you know, we can get it on your phone and you can get it on everything. It sort of makes it that more accessible, I think. Uh, and I think that is definitely one of the places to uh, to go. You know, it, it is one of the reasons why it is uh, taken off um, so very much. And then, of course, as it takes off, as the demand gets bigger, you'll have the professionals and you're, the performers there uh, and the content stepping up the game each time. Um, it but being, also, is it the audience? Yeah. Sorry, I would say, is it the audience that's changed? Because again, when going back, they were labelled on the actual library as books for the deaf, uh, for the blind. Sorry, yeah. getting that wrong. Uh, books for the blind. Um, whereas that's what you, you know, that you sort of a, a sighted person was, you know, it's almost like a fraud uh, going and using their books. Um, whereas now it's nothing to, you know, obviously partially sighted people, etc., are going to get a benefit from this, and it's the only way they can probably read books. Um, however, it, it probably that side, side of it is now the lesser important 
it's more about people listening to them on the road, commuting, whereas we never thought of that before. I think, I mean, sure. yes. Do you know, when uh, when in schools and everything, have you noticed any of the of, of the rise uh, of audiobooks used for comprehension purposes? Absolutely. So I think you're right, Malcolm. I think the marketing has changed. I haven't seen it really done through education as the marketing for audiobooks now is for um, people with visual impairments. However, it is still really used. And um, they put me out of a job because at the end of the day, I don't have to read them a story half the time now. I can just pop on the TV and, and off they go. And um, one of you guys take my place. Um, so it gives my throat a rest. But no, it is a really, really big thing. And I think just reading along, I know we talked about this last time, so I don't want to repeat it, but there's, I have I'm a, a pet peeve of mine is listening to an audio book and reading along. Um, the same book and we do that a lot in schools and children love it and it's a really good stimulant and it keeps them focused but I can't keep up I honestly can't because I'm so involved in this performance that we've been talking about um I really struggle and I switch off and I forget that I'm actually reading a book but um for the educational side of it uh, it's really good because they can put the comprehension to the words and they can have this context behind them. And especially when you are looking at something quite in depth, so doing, you know, your book and things, that would really help people digest the information that they're listening to, having the words and, and then the um, audio behind them. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I don't think my mind can do two things at once. It's, it's quite upsetting, <laughs> but yeah, um, who wants to hear that? <laughs> I struggle as well. Oh, Dean, was it always uh, on the cards to get an audiobook made, an audiobook version of Quantum? Was that always on the cards? Was that something that you wanted to do right from the get-go? Uh, yes. Uh, I tell you why. Uh, since I, I started, uh, as I told you before, being a, uh, for a long time a, a TV producer, I, the audiovisual for me is very important. And uh, by the way, during the pandemic, not only because of the pandemic, but uh, we had a, a rise of, uh, from the last year, from 19, uh, 2019 to uh, 2020, up to 28% in uh, uh, audiobook sales. And in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think so. Uh, in my opinion, this is going to be the ebook of the future. Because the ebook, in some way, you know, the ebook is okay if it's nonfiction. Ebook is something that you can, can go back and forth, you know, and uh, if it teaches you something that uh, you, but especially for uh, authors that are coming up now, that they decide to write books or, and they have a, an unbelievable, uh, they, they enter in a jungle. Let's put it in a, in plain word. They enter in a jungle. Amazon uh, is playing uh, the the you know the big part. Uh, it uh, and everybody was so excited with the Amazon. You know, it took like uh, actually the forty eight percent of the market, forty eight percent of the market of book is taken by Amazon because it's gonna give you you know the book in uh, immediately if it's an electronic download. Otherwise, in twenty four hours you you can have it at your home, and this. Uh, if uh, at the beginning, uh, or let's say looking from one side, ah, it's fantastic. From the other side, and also Amazon tells you, you want to write a book, nothing is easier than this. You know, you write a book, you put it on a KTP, and you're going to make a lot of uh, money. It's not true. It's simply not true because uh, uh, I, I think that uh, we, we touched a little bit this subject uh, the last time, but basically there are a lot of software up uh, out there that you buy for like probably like 30 bucks or something like that and this an artificial intelligence you put inside only, only the topics that you want to you want to write about and the, the artificial intelligence is picking up you know all this relevant you know uh, topics around the, the the net of things that and put together a text or a book without you writing one single word. This is not writing. This is uh, simply something that is, uh, is uh, confusing everybody. And a lot of people got into this, uh, 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 I call the spider net, you know, of buying books that are like, ah, buy my ebook, it's only one year, one, uh, uh, one dollar or 99 cents, and I teach you how to make. Uh, 
billions out of the finance world, you know. And after you you look at the guy that brought it, and is somebody is a perfect unknown person, you know. So anybody can be in this way expert of nothing. Being a writer is a job and it has to be taken as a job. First of all, you have to, you, you must have a, a little bit of talent, uh, a little bit of talent for writing if you, if you write fiction. If you write a nonfiction, you must master uh, your, uh, your, uh, your expertise, you know, your, your field of, of expert, but really master, meaning uh, you are doing this job since like 20 years, 30 years, and you know what you are talking about. Otherwise, they are only words put together one after another, you know, so it's not the same. I believe that the audiobook will be, and I'd be more specific on this. I believe that audiobook with full cast will be the future for the next generation. The, the kids now are, they, they got a focus, thanks to TikTok, they got a focus of 40 seconds. If you take out, you know, after the 40 seconds, they, they lose the focus. And this is horrible. This is horrible because it's not preparing for the future uh, um, a, a generation that uh, is going to be lost at the end of the game. You know, Carl Sagan used to say, uh, we, we have so much technology and uh, scientific uh, things that can be applied to the, the regular life, but we are not able to use it in a proper way, you know? And this is exactly what, we, what is happening now. You know, we, have a, we are bombarded of, with millions of, uh, of gadgets and software and uh, things that uh, they are designed to easy, uh, to ease our life, but in fact, they are not because uh, we, the, uh, the majority of people, they don't understand how this thing works. You know, and this cut away along, I remember when I was a kid, I am 60 now, so I, I remember when I was a kid, uh, uh, reading was something that was uh, taught to you by your parents. They used to put you, you know, a book and, and after you, you got book from the stories, you know, behind this Melville, uh, whatever, you know, Salgari, uh, the, the, the Sandoka and all these things that were for kids, you know, but at the end of the game, you, start to build worlds in your head uh, that helped you to grow up in a, in a, in a regular way. Now it's, it's not anymore like this. It's a 40 second video of an idiot that is dancing in front of, uh, in front of a camera, you know, and oh, it's gonna have like 1 million view and there's nothing there. There's no skill, there's no nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. So I believe, I strongly believe that audiobooks, if, uh, done in a proper way professionally done with people that uh, are professionals in in like like kevin you know i mean people that uh, know how to do this job this is a profession to be a, a, a an actor on an audiobook is a profession it's not something that you 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 know you go to sleep tonight and tomorrow morning i i want to be an actor in 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 audiobooks you know so I understand perfectly when Kevin says, you know, try, try to do it. And after you realize that it's not exactly what, uh, what you were thinking, but still the out of 40,000 audiobooks that are coming out every year, there are, let's say the truth, uh, 39,000 and probably 800, they are, excuse my French, pure shit, because they are, they are not done in a proper way, you know? And this is not acceptable in my opinion. I think that uh, with the time, the market is gonna, you know, like always, you know, the market is gonna, is gonna elevate the ones that are really worth, you know, and leaving behind, uh, you know, the, the one that are, that are not important. So I believe that in the next uh, five or six years, uh, we're gonna see uh, uh, a big surge of, uh, of audiobook and uh, especially audiobook done in a proper way. I agree. I agree completely. Uh, Kevin, are you optimistic um, in, in with the with the growth of the medium? Uh, is that you know are you seeing that on your end? Uh, are we? Uh, are you seeing that also? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, just, even just since I've been in it, you know, the audiobooks, uh, you know, just more and more people, I guess, and it's kind of what uh, Malcolm was talking about earlier. I think because the quality has gotten better. 
uh, I know a, I've run into people say, well, I don't like listening to audiobooks because they all talk, you know, the narrators are too slow or they're too monotone or, and, you know, for a while, that was kind of what narrators, I guess, were ex thought they were supposed to do, you know, just he told her that he loved her passionately, deeply, and that he would never leave her. And, you know, and instead of, you or to the other extreme, you know, new people will go, you know, like me, I would go over. He told her he loved her passionately, deeply, and would never leave. You know, and, and there's a, there's a way you tell it, you know, that comes with just training and doing it. But uh, as people are hearing them, and then the quality's gotten better. I know I listened to a, a book uh, from a series, I guess it started a few years ago. It's a very popular series. So I thought, well, this would be a great book. Well, I listened to the sample of it, and it was just so bad that there was just the guy talking and... <laughs> these deep breaths and noise and all that it, but at the time i think a lot of it because it was on cassette you know you had tape hiss anyway so you didn't notice a lot of that but now that you've got digital you notice it and so you know like i've got a 800 hundred dollar piece of software that takes out all the smacks and clicks and stuff in my voice you know that you know i might miss and you can have things to put the breath down if that's what you i mean breathing is natural but you know if you if you've got a sinus problem or you know between every sentence you're you're doing this, that gets distracting but as the production gets better and then more people listen and go yeah i you know i liked that and it wasn't irritating or it wasn't distracting what the narrator did then you know that causes them to go read more and tell their friends and then you know they loan their you next to amazon or audible you can actually loan an audiobook out and get more people into it so yeah i, I think there's a really good future for audiobooks yeah, I think it's I think it's fascinating. I think I mean, one of the things that first drew me into it was listening to books that were, um, you know, a point of view, a character point of view narrated. So it was like the so the character was telling you directly, um, you know, first person uh, fiction really drew me in, uh, and I think that was just it was it was the first thing where it sort of hit me where it was like this me this is a medium on its own. Um, you know, like in, in a way that, you know, you can't really compare a book to a film because, you, you know, your film has to be done in an hour and a half, two hours. But the books, you know, you have so much more room to play and to grow. So, you know, of course, the book's always going to be better than the film. But, in, you know, it's a different medium. So it's a, it's a different time. I think audiobooks also deserve to be in that different realm of like a different medium, because, of course, they're coming off the, they're coming off the source material. And of course, it is the book. Uh, but it's that added umph, it's that production value that. Uh, sort of bridges the gap a little bit that's my sort of personal way of thinking about it <laughs> the, uh, I think uh, that's the that's the one advantage of audiobooks over the movies is sometimes as a narrator you can maybe make things clearer that weren't so clear in the book as uh, Becky and I were having a little back and forth you know email thing going and I was pointing out that uh, one of the things that I hear from my authors it really makes me feel good is when they say you read it better than I wrote it because they'll say something about a character and I'll think, oh, so this is how this guy would sound or say this or behave. And that maybe wasn't spelled out in the book, but I just kind of, you, you, of course, you pre-read the book before you record it, you know, <laughs> and it's just what I picked up. And so that's the beauty of the audiobook. If you can, you know, help people, you'll get a better picture of the characters than maybe if they'd just been reading straight through on their own. I think, I think it's a really fascinating um, conversation. Uh, and I'm just I'm just super excited as an audiobook fan as well as obviously working within the industry. So I, I just as a fan, I'm so excited to see where it goes and and uh, yeah, the productions that come out of it. It's going to be really exciting. Um, I just wanted to say because we are just about to wrap up the time. I just wanted to say uh, say uh, for the for the recording uh, sake uh, that we uh, when this recording will be put out, there'll be all the information of where to get quantum. Uh, as well as the Facebook page uh, and and all the uh, the relevant links there are surrounding it. Uh, so if you are interested um, of uh, finding out more information about that, uh, the information will be surrounding this video somewhere. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, it's all brilliant. But yeah, I just wanted to thank you once again, um, each and every one of you for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Uh, and I'm, uh, uh, one with, thing, sorry, yeah. sorry, Johnny, I, I wanted only to come up with something we are preparing, and uh, this is uh, uh, news for everybody, we are preparing uh, uh, a channel that is called The Fictionist, and is uh, especially done for uh, uh, fiction writer, so, and there will be, uh, we, we have to talk 
you know me and you about uh, this thing because it's uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be you know something that uh, we, we the my intention is because i have seen a lot of uh, 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 potential good author that uh, are are taken away by the you know by the 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 stream of uh, of uh, of uh, amazon and uh, everything else so I, I in uh, in this channel will will be focused on uh, how to get uh, the right way in order to write and make audiobooks. You know, so I I will talk also. Uh, the, the, um, Becky knows about this. Uh, I will talk with her uh, in the in the next week because we are preparing a, a programming and everything else. So it's going to be quite nice. You know, you know to to have uh, you as a partner in uh, in this venture and uh, anybody else that uh, work with with me in uh, in uh, in uh, quantum you know will be more than welcome to to be a guest on this channel and uh, we'll see what is going on that sounds fantastic absolutely <laughs> that sounds really exciting okay um yeah so guys thank you so much Malcolm, jess kevin of course dean becky thank you so much for joining us today um i do hope uh, that we can all meet together uh, once again, um, where the more information will be uh, posted out during the, uh, you know, through email uh, and, and the like. Uh, but yes, thank you so much once again for joining us. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, communication. And as this grows and grows, uh, yeah, who knows? We might start, we might finally start that band, Kevin. <laughs> uh, good, good. <laughs> thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks.